In this video, I'll be showing you how to clean and filter your data using pivot tables. So here we have um, a file on Los Angeles, and there's a lot of information going on on here. So the first thing I'd like to do is to familiarize myself with the data set. Um, so one way to do that is uh, to go ahead and uh, take go to the data tab and um, click somewhere on your data set so that Excel knows that you want it to work with the data. If you don't click somewhere, it won't know. Uh, I'll go ahead and click on the filter now, and it turns on the filters up at the top in all of my variables in my columns. Um, what I can do, for instance, is I'm curious to see what kind of data is there. So if I click on the triangle, it will open up all the unique options. And so we can see in column F by room type, there's really only three options available um, as an answer choice there. Um, if I go to uh, bathrooms, right, I can see there's uh, a bunch of options for bathrooms that people have reported about their listing. Um, under neighborhoods, I can see there's a lot of neighborhoods going on. And then same thing here in property type. Um, I'm noticing, and um, if you, when you do the drop down in the lower right corner, you'll see like three dots. If you want to, you can make it bigger so you can see more. Um, unfortunately, you really can't zoom in, uh, but that's at least you can see more at a time, and then you can scroll down and look around. Um, interestingly enough, uh, Airbnb has changed the way it reports its property types a little bit. So you can see um, it'll say like entire condo or entire home. Um, so just FYI there. Um, okay, now what I've done with the file is I have put in the title how many listings there are. So in this case, Los Angeles has 21,782 listings. Uh, but if you wanted to double check that, and I always encourage you to double check, is if you um, click on a, a column of data, um, for instance, I can click on all of column E, and it highlights everything. And I look in the lower right-hand corner here, it says the count of items that are being highlighted is 21,783. And now you might ask, well, why is that one number higher than what is in the title? And here's the thing. The first row property type is not a listing. That's the name of the variable. So that's why the um, title is one number short of what my count is in the lower right hand corner. So just keep that in mind. Um, so that's one way of seeing the count. Let's see. And then, you know, just scroll around and you can see what variables there are, right? We've got name, neighborhood, property type, room type, um, accommodates, which is how many people are allowed in that air rental, um, the bathrooms, bedrooms, the number of beds, the nightly price. There's the minimum nights per uh, stay and the maximum nights per stay. I'm just going to scroll a little bit further. Um, the number of reviews. So that's great. You can see how popular something is um, based on how many reviews it's received. And then the actual like um, review scores that they've received by category. Uh, a new feature that um, is in the data is this instant bookable. So that's whether or not um, the Airbnb host allows guests to instantly book. Um, just with a quick click of a button on the app. So uh, true is you can do it, and false is you can't instantly book. Now let's go ahead and create a pivot table so that we can organize and sort our data. I will highlight, um, in terms of the filters, if you wanted to see something, for instance, I'm going to uncheck that, and I'm curious about... I'm curious, how many castles are there? So I'm going to check that real quick and hit OK. Oh, there's only four castles available in um, Los Angeles. What I've done is I've filtered, but all the data is still there. It's just hidden. So you can see how I only see certain row numbers here. Everything else is just tucked away. If I try to have Excel do any analysis on this page, it's still going to analyze everything. So you cannot analyze through the filters because Excel can still see in between the lines. That's why it's so important that when we are doing our data analysis that we use pivot tables, because with pivot tables, we can remove what we don't need and keep what we want and then do the analysis on that. So let's go ahead and switch gears to pivot tables. Again, I've clicked somewhere on um, my data set so it knows this is what I'm working with. 
I'll go ahead and click on insert and then click on pivot table. It's the very first option. And then just hit OK because it's going to create a pivot table using all of my data on here. And you'll know it because everything is highlighted all the way around with these like um, dash lines that are kind of moving. Let's click OK. Now, you'll notice once the pivot table is created, it appears under a new tab. And um, there's this pivot table shell that's waiting for you to create um, like the layout. So over here on the right, you can see the variables are listed here in the order that they appear on the last um, tab. And um, there are some options in how to organize um, and work with the data. So um, I'm going to work with rows first because I want to organize some things by rows. So one common one that I like is I could take neighborhood cleansed. If I click on it, Excel sometimes might drop it here or there. So just be aware of where it appears. Um, I'm going to unclick real quick. Another option you can do is you can click on it and drag oops, and drop it into the rows where you want it, right? So um, this now shows me all the neighborhoods in Los Angeles, and there's quite a few. Now, um, I want to do the count. I want to know how many listings are by uh, neighborhood. So again, I will click carefully and drag and drop that neighborhood cleansed over into the values. So anytime we see the word values, just think numbers, right? So it's some kind of number is going to appear. In this case, it's the count of listings by neighborhood cleanse. So we can see some neighborhoods have a lot of listings while others just have a few. Okay, um, so there's that. Uh, another thing that might be helpful is perhaps the price, right? So I'm going to take price here and I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop that into values. Now here's the thing. Excel doesn't know what we need. That's why you need to instruct it or design the pivot table you want because it defaulted to sum of price. Let's see about that right here. And sum just means please add up all the prices. That's not useful to us necessarily. What would be more useful would be the average price of listings by neighborhood. And so to change that, if you double click on um, the, the, the top here, a uh, small window will appear and it's got some options, count, average, max, min. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and click on average and then hit okay. You'll notice it's not the prettiest, because price means money. So what I can do is I can format this real quick. So I'll highlight the C and then on my home tab up here where the number formatting is, I can, I'll can i click on the little drop down and um, I can choose you know US dollars for instance and that'll fix everything. Um, now for some of you, you may be working with a city that's in another part of the world. Um, I'm just highlighting just so you can see it. With the drop down, maybe you're working with Euro, make sure you change that to Euro. Maybe you're working with British pounds, so you wanna use pounds. Um, this defaults to like some of the more popular ones. But if you're not sure what currency yours is in, they are listed in Canvas next to your city name. Uh, but to be safe, another thing you could simply do is just choose the comma. And that simply turns it into accounting without the um, currency symbol. So that's another option you can do. So now we've got some variables here. Uh, maybe you want, want to organize it some more. So what I like to do is perhaps focus on the most popular neighborhoods or focus on price. So what you can do is you can sort this information. So if you click here and uh, do a right click, um, there's a sort option. You can do largest to smallest, so you can see the most popular neighborhoods. Okay, um, and you know maybe I'll highlight just so I can see them easily. Now, uh, with a pivot table, I do not recommend trying to make descriptive statistics or graphs and charts directly with the entire pivot table because it can be overwhelming with too much data. I'd rather focus on some key things. So for instance, if you decide, hey, I just wanna focus on the most popular listings in Los Angeles, what you'll wanna do is you'll want to copy and paste the data that you like, I'm gonna copy, and then paste it over here. And then with that, 
now I can make a graph or a chart using this information, right? And not having it tied to the pivot table, which can get really messy. Another thing to be aware of with, when you're doing the descriptive statistics and graphs and charts, it's best to do charts with a single variable. So don't try to do a chart that has the count of the neighborhood and the average price, because these are two different units of measure. One is we're counting and the other one is the average price. So that won't make sense in a graph if you're trying to put them side by side. So as you can see, when I copied and pasted my values, um, I really only focused on one variable at this time and I'm going to leave it alone. Um, if I want to make a graph uh, with average price, then what I'll do is, you know, I'll copy um, the data I want. Again, just the price, nothing else and then put that over here as well, put the paste. So then I can make a graph about pricing, I can make a graph about um, the count, and they're two separate things. And I show you how to do um, graphs and charts in another uh, video. Let me go ahead and uh, delete this out since we don't need it. Um, what I'm gonna show you next is if you wanted to create more pivot tables, but we've already done some of the work, some, some setup, and so you just wanna adjust um, what you can do is right down here at the tab, if you right click and um, go move or copy, and it's sheet one, I'm going to check the create a copy box and hit OK. Another tab with the same pivot table is sitting there already for you. So you can see sheet one and sheet two look the same. But I want to start making some changes here. Um, maybe I don't want to see the price anymore, so I can uncheck that. Per, uh, perhaps I want to um, look at property type, right? So uh, let's see what happens. I'm gonna drag and drop property type down below. And now I can see, ooh, I can see property types by neighborhood. So you can see when I have two variables in the rows, depending on the order that I put them, that's how they'll be viewed in the table. So um, I've got neighborhood first and property type second. So um, you've got Venice here and then the different property types. So this will give you an idea of like, hmm, maybe I want to focus on a particular area. So let me go ahead and just, I'm going to remove property type. I, I can uncheck it or drag and drop it back. So, um, so here we are in the neighborhood cleansed, and that's all I'm seeing. And perhaps you decide, you know what, I just want to focus on one neighborhood. This is how you're going to pull out the data and then use that for the majority of your project, for instance, right? So let's say I am really interested in um, Venice, uh, Los Angeles, because it's got the most listings and you know I want something that's like near the beach. So what you can do is just double click on the number, this 1068. If you double click on it, it will only pull the Venice data into a new tab. So you can see it says sheet three here. And now I have lovely raw data on just Venice. And what I recommend is renaming it so you're not trying to remember like which tabs which. So I'm gonna right click and rename and I will call this Venice. And for good measure, I added only, Venice only, right? And so this would be the tab that I would want to continue working on for my project uh, for the rest of the semester, as an example. Now, um, let's go back to the neighborhood count. Now, if you wanted to analyze the data for multiple neighborhoods, so what I would do is click on the drop down here, and let's say I want to do uh, Long Beach. Let's do Long Beach. I'll check that one, and I want to do Venice. Where's Venice? And uh, maybe I don't know Hollywood. Let's just do Hollywood. There's Hollywood, and I hit OK. Uh, so now I've just got those three neighborhoods, and then what you'll want to do is double click on the grand total twice and uh, now let's check the data got pulled to a new tab if I do the drop down I can see yep there's my Hollywood Long Beach and Venice the three neighborhoods that I wanted to focus on so just some things to consider when you are working with um, pivot tables you can use it to see what's happening you can use it to um, you know compare neighborhoods pull out some specific information and what's really 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 nice is it allows you to pull out specific um, listings or data points that you want. So let me just, you know, I'll say three neighborhoods. Now here we're on the Venice tab. If you want, you can make another pivot table uh, that would just analyze 
Venice for you. So if I'm clicking somewhere here, I go insert and another pivot table um, and then hit OK. Uh, again, I can start organizing. Maybe I just want to know the property types. Um, again, this is all Venice and I want to know the price. So I'll drag and drop that there. Again, sum of price is not helpful to me, so I'll double click and change that to average. And then so here, and I'll uh, you know turn it into money and do the comma. So now I have um, some more information about Venice. Venice in terms of the kinds of um, properties that are available and the average price per night. And uh, you know maybe I want to know how many. So let me do drag that property type over to values. And there's my count. If you wanted to narrow further, maybe you just wanted the um, entire homes. If I double click this it's now going to show me just the Venice entire home options. So you can keep drilling and narrowing data using the pivot table and then just double clicking on the thing that you want. So if you have any questions, just let me know.